Good afternoon to all our attendants in class and also to those online. And uh, we start just now with optional courses. We finished all those mandatory ones. And the first optional course for which some of uh, the whole group opted, I think a significant uh, number of students. Uh, so that's gender equality and uh, business law. Uh, first, we will have uh, pleasure and honor that Professor Tatiana Yevremovic Petrovic give her lecture, maybe one her lecture, involvement of women from the business law perspective, regulatory framework for female entrepreneurship, and also she will explain that half of the common lecture of Professor Jelena Lepetic, that is fostering of gender diversity in the EU internal market, supporting gender equality in international trade and investment agreements. So she will uh, hold half of that lecture because, as you know uh, from the agenda, together Professor Jelena Lepetic and Tatiana Jevremovic will complete that uh, lecture. Then, uh, then Professor Jelena Lepetic will join us and she will also uh, hold the discussion uh, workshop at the end. So, Tanya, the floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Vujadinović. Uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, good afternoon to those present. Um, unfortunately, we have a bad weather and crowd, uh, which prevented uh, many people to, to join us in person. But I do hope that uh, many of you are uh, following uh, online. Uh, and uh, I would uh, like to say thank you for choosing this optional course. Uh, you will uh, see that we have many important issues to intertwine with everything uh, which was mentioned so far. And I think that it would be a, a great uh, supplement to everything which was heard uh, so far. Um, before uh, I um, proceed uh, again, I would like to, um, I'm just sorry to make available my presentation. Something is not properly working. Okay. Um, once again, I would like to say um, thank you very much to Professor Dragica Vujadinović to uh, make this uh, Law Gem uh, course uh, available. First of all, to a uh, great idea to initiate uh, cooperation with many universities uh, all over Europe, uh, which was uh, according to her enthusiasm and uh, great energy and work uh, privilege then for us to join her in this team. Um, me personally, I was a little bit reluctant uh, before joining this course, but uh, I was so happy once I was involved because there were so many important issues I discovered so thank you once again it was great experience this is something which brand it is branding our faculty so when somebody is saying uh, law jam it's something which we all made together but grace to, to professor Vladimir's energy work and dedication so it was a, a privilege to work on the project and this is the result of that project we had in regard to a specific uh, topic uh, we are uh, covering in this uh, course uh, dedicated to business law. Um, so as Professor Vladinovic announced, today we divided our presentation lecture into two parts. I will start with uh, one part of this uh, uh, business law agenda perspective in presenting uh, various issues uh, in regard to uh, economic empowerment of uh, women, uh, in particular female entrepreneurship. And I will also um, talk just a little bit uh, on the issues of internal market and uh, show you some uh, good examples of how even though internal market is dedicated to uh, economic issues and um, reducing uh, um, inequality in terms of nationality, it also has important uh, aspect uh, related to gender um, empowerment and uh, gender perspective. Um, after that, we'll make a short break, uh, and afterwards, uh, my colleague Jelena Lepetic will uh, then join you to present her work uh, 
uh, on the uh, board representation and uh, female involvement in the business decision making, which is uh, of high relevance since the adoption of directive in December last year. Um, I will um, turn on again presentation uh, and uh, go a little bit uh, back uh, in what I said so far. Um, so um, once again, uh, we are going to share um, today's lecture, me and Professor Yelena Lepetic. Um, I'm going to dedicate the first part of the lecture uh, to uh, discuss uh, issues in regard to economic empowerment of women. And uh, I will um, focus on uh, female entrepreneurship. Uh, after that, we will go into uh, issues in regard to internal market and uh, whether and in as much uh, as possible to involve gender equality on the fundamental freedoms. After that, we will make a short break uh, in, for example, 10 to 15 minutes. And after the break, uh, our colleague Jelena Lepetic is going to um, join us and she is going to... Um, Give us. Mm -hmm. She is uh, going to uh, give us lecture on the um, role of women in business law decision making and discuss uh, involvement of female on boards of directors in arbitrations, etc. And finally, she will also uh, join discussion at the end on everything we said so far. Okay, so if we can uh, start with a little um, 10 to 15 minutes late, um, I will start with the European Gender Equality Strategy, which was done in 2020, and uh, with the goal to uh, make progress on the gender equality in Europe until 2025. And there were various goals uh, underlined within this strategy, and among them, uh, the importance is also stressed on the uh, equal position of uh, all uh, involved uh, in regard to um, the uh, social and economic position by the improvement of um, uh, gender equivalent uh, business environment in terms of making business uh, environment open and welcome to everybody. Also, uh, the strategy, strategy underlined that uh, it needs to uh, improve and uh, encourage um, funding, which you will see is one of the most important issues when we discuss uh, gender equality in business law. And uh, uh, also, they were uh, stressing out the importance of um, improve uh, balance in decision-making process, which is not only in regard to political and social position, but also in economic uh, life. And this is uh, because of all these issues that um, economic, political, and social um, uh, goals uh, must work together. And this is where we uh, see how uh, much important uh, this business law aspect has for all other aspects, as you will see a little uh, bit later. So um, the issue of um, uh, economic empowerment uh, was not only related to the European Union. It was uh, also a, a worldwide phenomenon. And uh, during uh, various economic forum reports uh, uh, during 2020, for example, they were stressed uh, on many important issues. And among other issues, they were concerned uh, with uh, the uh, position of uh, women in uh, economic uh, um, participation. And their result, uh, according to various uh, uh, research, was that uh, uh, position of women is actually regressing in terms of that they are uh, gaining more uh, knowledge, more education, more political power, a better position uh, in uh, social uh, uh, standings, but uh, unfortunately their economic position is not improved in parallel to those uh, positions, but is a little bit uh, regressed uh, according to all these improvements. 
Netherlands, and they were suggesting that it would need uh, many years, um, uh, in particular 151 years, to uh, achieve gender parity in certain uh, aspects uh, of economic participation of uh, women. And uh, this was due to various uh, important uh, aspects of their position. First of all, they are underrepresented on the labor market. So you will see, according to statistical data, this is also very much um, important and is, has uh, important consequences on their involvement in uh, various entrepreneurial activities. Also, they face inequality in terms of wages and income. And uh, uh, this also uh, is reflected on the uh, business law and uh, how we can uh, make uh, a certain improvement in these issues. Uh, they are also intertwined with other aspects of uh, other branches of law. For example, labor law plays an uh, important role in making uh, equivalent uh, all uh, players in the uh, labor market and uh, in uh, um, improving equality in terms of wages and uh, incomes, but also business law, as you will see, plays an uh, additional role in that. Finally, this uh, uh, not equal economic participation is also due to a lower uh, level uh, of access to financial investments, in particular in um, bank loans, in uh, ownership on the property, uh, in uh, possibility to um, be uh, consumers of various financial products, we will see that we have a huge inequality and uh, that inequality we try to reduce as much as possible. So when it comes to female entrepreneurship as being one part of this um, empowerment of uh, women, um, it is uh, generally said that entrepreneurship in general is something which is uh, in recent decades uh, needs to be uh, empowered in general. So all entrepreneurship we are trying to enforce and to, to, to uh, empower as much as possible. We are trying to um, uh, use that economic potential with various groups of uh, persons who are not represented as much as they could be uh, within uh, entrepreneurship. And within these categories, it's not only female, but other uh, underrepresented um, uh, groups of persons who are facing inequalities. And uh, it is uh, therefore entrepreneurship and enforcement and, and, and empowering through entrepreneurship open, not only to fe female, but also other um, disadvantaged persons. So. Um, it is not only that we seek to um, show and use that economic potential for these um, persons who are in unequal position to bring them economic benefits, because they will have definitely more economic benefits if we try to bring them out to show their best in terms of entrepreneurship. It is also very relevant for greater social significance of these groups, because they will gain more socially um, um, better position in, in society by gaining economic uh, uh, better level. So it's again intertwined all these issues together and by bringing these um, groups of persons and among them in particular female, we're bringing them not only economic but also other gains. Um, so, uh, entrepreneurship is being encouraged in general, uh, worldwide, uh, and uh, in various uh, uh, levels, uh, first of all, on national level, every uh, modern uh, country is trying to improve entrepreneurship in these uh, um, various groups, and in particular within females, and they're trying to bring 
out the best of them because they see that even though before uh, our focus in business law was on the huge economic uh, players on the market, we see in, in recent time that there is a huge uh, a number of small um, uh, economic uh, uh, um, achievements and possibilities which will uh, bring uh, a better gain to, to everybody. So each country is trying to promote entrepreneurship in general. Also, we are trying to promote it on the regional level uh, within the European Union. There are many initiatives uh, to uh, make uh, and encourage entrepreneurship in general. And uh, within the European Union, there were several acts which were encouraging entrepreneurship. And in each of them, it was particularly underlined that uh, female play one of these uh, important players, actors in, in improving entrepreneurship in general. Uh, before we start to see how we can improve uh, female entrepreneurship, I would just like to stress out what I consider when I say entrepreneurship and uh, what how we can define female entrepreneurship. It is not only position of um, a person, a female, who is going to perform certain business activity as a sole entrepreneur, which is the most common understanding of this term but this is also involvement with other persons in various business activities as much as that person has a certain control over the uh, business affairs so it can be also involvement within uh, companies and uh, other forms of business ventures as much as uh, they are in control of their business activity also, when we say that we promote female entrepreneurship, we are also promoting their position in various bodies who has uh, uh, that, uh, who has an important managerial position, for example, within board of directors or other bodies with a huge responsibility in terms of uh, managing a business. So uh, we are encouraging all these various uh, involvement uh, possibilities to feed Females, so they are not limited to certain type in terms of a legal definition. So why we are doing this? Because first of all, if we take a look at statistical data, we see that women represent 52% of uh, total population in terms of EU um, statistical data uh, a couple of years ago. So let's say that they are uh, represented in half of the total population. But if you take a look at the percentage of female entrepreneurship, it goes uh, to average of 29% of total entrepreneurship. So um, it's unequal compared to uh, the total population uh, number of female. Um, of course, this is average for European countries. Um, fortunately for uh, um, many countries, is this, uh, this statistical overview was not only related to EU member states, but also covered many other non-EU uh, member states, especially from this region. So it also included Serbia, it included Montenegro, Albania, Turkey, and we have a very valuable information in terms of comparison how entrepreneurship was developed at the time when the statistics were uh, being gathered. So we can see that it's even in this uh, uh, low percentage of female entrepreneurship, there are many areas, parts of Europe, and this part is also included, that this number of 29% is even lower. So for example, in Serbia, we have less than 25% of female entrepreneurs, and for example, 15% of females being owners of the companies, which is a really um, uh, a low um, statistical uh, result. Again, 
if we take a look at the uh, activities performed by this business, we will again have a really depressive uh, results. For example, majority of these business activities is uh, among uh, services, uh, provision of services, or are concentrated in certain activities, like uh, medical activities, education, are the most prominent ones. Unlike that, if you take a look at certain activities which are, for example, in high-tech, in science, in technical development, research, etc., you will see that uh, female representation is between 5 and 15 percent, which is then, again, uh, related to their business results. Because, as you will see later on, it is not only they are not uh, participating in certain activities, but that there is a correlation between activities and um, prospects of the companies to um, uh, gain profit, to uh, have a better business results, to stay uh, during certain um, crises or uh, terms uh, when uh, it is a market uh, being disrupted. So we have, in, if we compare all these results, very uh, uh, low percentage of female representation in those businesses which tend to grow big, which tend to have big incomes or are um, situated on a regulated markets where, where they can attract more investments. Therefore, uh, we, uh, in terms of business law, we uh, must do something in order to improve that position. And it is a task of, uh, first of all, lawyers when it comes to business law to, um, uh, first of all, uh, analyze uh, what's the situation and then try to uh, somehow improve that position. So um, what, uh, first of all, we uh, were doing in, in past decades was to identify what were specific problems related to female entrepreneurship. And uh, uh, we came to certain results so far. First of all, that First of all, we have low intensity of entrepreneurial uh, activity in general. So we need to bring more female by affirmative action to be more active in terms of entrepreneurship. Second of all, we have various issues of lower e earnings by female even if and when they uh, start their own entrepreneurial activity. Third, we have underdeveloped business ventures when they are undertaken by females, so they tend to remain on small or medium level, which is in terms of incomes uh, quite um, um, limited and also is exposed to market risks. So they tend to go uh, insolvent and they tend to be liquidated sooner than uh, bigger um, uh, business ventures. Also, we've seen that we have certain ventures which are completely restricted to female entrepreneurship or uh, are usually limited in terms of scope and number. So, as I said, they are focusing on certain sectors where you have a small businesses as a standard, uh, again, provision of educational, medical, and other services. So what uh, we uh, need to do Second is when we, we've seen what is the problem to see uh, how we can, as I said, improve uh, that situation. So first of all, we will see how and why certain persons are deciding at all to initiate to start up a uh, business venture. And the uh, trend is uh, uh, not only in regard to female, but uh, in general, that people are more, more prone to um, be employed rather than to be entrepreneurs, rather than to take their own risks. And um, according to certain survey uh, within student population, it is a general trend that uh, majority of uh, um, 
students would wish to be rather employed than to start their own business. And among them, majority of females were usually opt for being employed in preferable uh, public service than rather to uh, start their own business, even though they are aware that in that situation their potential, their knowledge, their uh, um, earnings won't be as uh, it could be if they wanted to start their own business. So usual choice for entrepreneurship is when you have no other choice. So if you are unemployed, you cannot find your job, you will then decide to start your own business or to uh, go into business venture with somebody. So it is the preferable uh, when it comes to, again, female uh, decision making, preferable to, to, to women to decide to do entrepreneurial uh, uh, activity only if they are pushed, they have no other choice. Second possibility, which also is usual in terms of female population, is to decide to do business uh, only if it suits their lifestyle choice. For example, they are unemployed and then uh, because of various duties they have uh, with family in their own home, etc., they would uh, choose to be um, pursuing a certain entrepreneurial activity because only that activity will suit their lifestyle. They cannot have fixed uh, time to, to work uh, for somebody else and this would be their uh, only, again, choice. So these first two options are the most common ones when it comes to female. Why they want to start business opportunity activity, it's because of these two reasons. Very rarely we have this third or fourth uh, uh, reason why somebody would like to pursue business uh, uh, activity. And this is uh, development entrepreneurship when you want to compete, when you want to do something by yourself, when you see that you can do something else better than your competitors and you want to have better um, competitive advantages, or something which is extremely rare, when you have some revolutionary idea which is usually connected with a huge investment, which is extremely rare when it comes to female. What is specific to these last two options is they usually come with a, a huge business venture which is uh, a providing possibility to have a greater income and better business results. So these first two options usually come with a lower level, with this small size enterprise, unlike this third and fourth option which are usually not chosen by females are connected to uh, large business ventures or uh, at least those with a uh, large initial uh, investment. So therefore, we see that not only that is surprising that they stay on this uh, um, low level in terms of the size and the scope of their business activities, but from the start their choices are towards these limited uh, activities which won't give them possibilities to, 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 to grow further. What are typical barriers in relation to business and how we can overcome them? Some of them are not typical for, for, for female. Many entrepreneurship uh, activities are related to various, uh, barriers, uh, various barriers which are equal to all. For example, uh, the most typical barrier to all is to have adequate funding. So if you lack funds, you are not able to start your own business. Second is typical to be related to various administrative or other constraints or burdens. If you see that something is too difficult, if it takes too much trouble, if it's just uh, something you do not know how to do, you won't do certain business activity if it's um, unfamiliar, etc. Also, it's related to training. Less knowledge you have, less prone to business ventures you will be. Less somebody is encouraging you, then you would be less uh, uh, 
uh, risk prone to, to, to start your business activity. Finally, a lack of information is considered to be of huge importance when it comes to business decision making. Also, what we see in entrepreneurship is that social acceptance is one of the major uh, points when somebody wants to decide to do business. If you see that business venturing is acceptable in terms of social acceptance, you would be more prone to start your business yourself and vice versa. Uh, so all these uh, uh, components, all these barriers are typical to everybody. But if we take a look at, at each of these particular aspects, we will see that females are less risk uh, prone in, in terms of every and particular each of these, uh, each, uh, of these particular uh, uh, barriers. We will see what limits are in regard to, to funding. It remains the most important problem for, pe for female, and it's even more stressed for females, as you will see. But also, females tend to be less risk prone. They, according to various uh, psychological research, uh, are not really uh, uh, prepared to, to take risks as men usually are. So when it comes to starting your business activity, it would be again uh, a, a more barrier to female than to, to men. Other thing which is again very important burden for female is uh, that they usually have lower level of information, lower level of encouragement, lower level of social acceptance. It is not that much socially accepted for female to be entrepreneur, unlike men who would be much more accepted, socially accepted, if they are um, doing their own business ventures. So apart from these general barriers, what are typical again and, and still undermine the decision of female to pursue business activity is that, first of all, we have uh, various problems uh, when you want to combine personal life and your family obligations and your home obligations with your professional activities. If there is a choice, usually it would be in a family one person who would need to stay, let's say, at home, and the other person would go and work. And typical choice would be that you will choose a, um, a father of the house or a man to pursue certain business activity, and female would be left home with kids taking care of house, um, the rest of the family, etc. So there are certain stereotypes that women should stay at home, irrespective of the fact whether they are more skilled, educated, or uh, would be better in, in performing certain business activity. Also, we have, again, stereotypes in terms of education. We have typical male and female educational choices. When female want to um, uh, achieve higher level of education, they would be much more prone to go and pursue those careers which are considered to be female professions rather than male professions they would even if educated in certain male professions, it would be much harder for them than later to pursue that business activity and to show that they are equivalent and as good as men in certain professions where uh, uh, it's not usual for, for female to be present. And this goes particularly within technology, research, development, science, and it's typical in certain, um, I uh, have to say, uh, environments that is typically uh, seen as a male profession. Uh, you would be surprised in how many European countries you have this uh, strictly male professions on a high level of education, on a high level of earnings, are typically reserved for men even today. So uh, what uh, is, again, um, specific to, to, to female and at the end and at the beginning, I should say, when it comes to entrepreneurship is 
funding. Um, because in all these stereotypes and all these situations, you would be in a situation that you need to dedicate certain funds for your business venture. And in family, if you have to choose who will use money, let's say, for a business venture, it would be rarely choice to do um, for a woman to do. Also, um, funding is not what you have in terms of your family or your personal income. It's very related to issues of um, property and land ownership. And again, if you own certain property, that is one of the most important um, factors when a uh, bank is deciding on the loan to whom certain uh, loans would be dedicated. And you will see that it's uh, a really sad uh, information, uh, statistical data on how low percentage of land ownership is widespread in certain areas. So all these, these barriers are preventing female to be equal in terms of entrepreneurship. So what are results of this? If you are lack financing, you won't be able to start up your business venture. So what we uh, need to do is to, first of all, make um, female being independent of what they already own in terms of their own uh, savings or family savings. And we need to find other resources to make uh, available female to start up their business venture. Um, also, by financing, we will let them pursue those activities where you need higher level of finance to pursue activity. Because if you are um, uh, relying on your own, then you again will start with a small business and it will just not thrive during, uh, during a, a business venture. So, where to find the funding? Typical funding in Europe is related to external funding, is related to bank funding. Typically, when you want to pursue any business activity, you would go and uh, take a loan from the bank. And uh, when it comes to gender equality, we have, in terms of formal requirements, equal position in terms of gender when uh, we discuss uh, consumer protection and financial, financial services. So according to European Union Council Directive from 2004, in provision of services, and it goes also for financial services, is forbidden to discriminate based on sex. But Usually, it is not only this formal direct equivalence which is important to gain um, sources and to uh, obtain bank loan. Usually, banks will take a look at many important issues related to your situation when deciding on the bank loan. So they would usually have a limited sources for bank loans for small and medium enterprises. They would not risk with something which is risky. They won't put too many resources of their own in something which is not high technology, research, development, business ventures which will make revolutionary products, etc. So again, we are falling back to these uh, problems of when, why, uh, and uh, with what sources and education females start their business venture. So usually these criteria would be decisive not to provide adequate funding for female in terms of entrepreneurship. So what else we can do? We can have various affirmative action. We can provide and dedicate certain funds, especially and particularly for female entrepreneurship. This is a way how you will uh, empower and make possible that not 
certain funds are available to everybody, but just particularly to foster and, and, and improve position on females. So you, will, so you will dedicate certain funds, and usually it is done by state. So state is usually having certain public calls for female and uh, is um, promoting female entrepreneurship by um, certain calls for um, loans or uh, resources which are uh, not to be paid back by uh, female entrepreneurs. Nevertheless, uh, state funding is also limited funding, and you cannot rely on state to be the exclusive provider of funds. So what we need is something which is, again, quite important for entrepreneurship in general, is to rely on alternative sources of funding, on private funding, on private ventures where somebody wants to invest in a good prospectus uh, uh, venture and in this situation we are trying to make as much as possible these private funding sources in order to provide sources particularly for female entrepreneurship and uh, in, in that regard European Union did a lot in, in recent decades and in particularly in recent years they are um, trying to make available certain uh, investment funds which would be dedicated in particularly for female entrepreneurship. They are also, um, as you will see, trying to uh, make uh, various groups, networks to, uh, to, to, to make available funds and to connect those who want to invest with those who need funds for certain activities. And in that regard, European Union, in order to provide funds, came to the conclusion that the first level of action needs to be in terms of um, education and training and making available people to be encouraged to pursue activities so they can use funds available. So, first of all, they are starting with education and information. And once you gain education and information, you can use funds and then develop your business venture. How to improve education and training? This needs to be done in a really uh, a long term, uh, it is a long term goal and needs to be done from the beginning of education for primary schools, for, from secondary schools, from universities to educate people how they can turn their good ideas into a business ventures. And this is particularly important not only during um, this uh, younger education uh, periods of edu education of uh, first and, and secondary, but also in this uh, um, adult age and among certain uh, groups, in particular female, who are not prone to get educated once they have family, etc., and they don't have time to again uh, uh, go further and, and train and educate and, and gain uh, additional knowledge. So what we need to do is first of all change attitude, goals, trainings, etc. on all levels of uh, education and during lifetime and not only in, in schools and universities. What we also need in this um, sphere is to make um, female entrepreneurs role models from the young age to show that it's cool to be an entrepreneur, that it is socially acceptable and valued to uh, realize your own entrepreneurship project, which needs to be done from the beginning of and throughout uh, uh, life uh, of, of, of everybody. So, as I said, the European Union tried to combine these two goals, the goal of education, information and funding. And in that regard, they decided to try to develop as much as possible networking in terms of creating networks which would combine those who have knowledge, those who have experience, those who already tried with entrepreneurship project and succeeded, and those who wish to try, who wish 
wish to learn, who need money, and who want to provide money. So they um, developed various platform projects to um, combine and, and, and to network all these people. And with uh, these uh, information uh, technologies we have today, and um, we have to say thank you for, uh, to COVID uh, also for this, uh, because during COVID they developed so many platforms for communication and networking, which were dedicated to entrepreneurial activities. Because many females were left without jobs, they were facing uh, problems uh, in, in terms of income, and it was really important during that time to support them economically, uh, not only uh, in terms of, uh, of social and, and, and other support. So we have various platforms. You can see some of them uh, here written on the screen. We also we also have platforms to uh, invite um, uh, persons, who, uh, persons who want to invest. They are called, by the way, business angels, those who want privately to invest into a good business venture. So they are combining business um, uh, opportunities with uh, uh, business sources and, and financial sources. So we have female business angels and female um, entrepreneurs uh, who are in that way being connected and providing with necessary funds. We have also these networks of ambassadors because when it comes to female, it's really important to have this um, support uh, in terms of uh, seeing that if somebody succeeded, then you can also uh, succeed in your business venture, in your business idea. It's to uh, uh, not only encourage that you start doing something uh, if you are not uh, employed, it's to show that it's, it's something which would be accepted and, and valued in, in uh, your uh, social uh, circles. So it's really important, uh, it was uh, realized to uh, network and to further develop mentors to train female how to, again, pursue their uh, business activities. So we have various projects in relation to awards, competitions. Here in Serbia, we have already so many networks. We have uh, prizes and awards for um, females who succeeded in their own business venture, which is a great uh, uh, way to, to uh, um, foster and to, to really uh, show opportunity for those who were not not even thinking of whether they could and how they could uh, decide to, to uh, network and to start into entrepreneurship. So all of these uh, um, uh, so far uh, measures were related, as you can see, into gaining more knowledge, gaining more sources, uh, gaining more funding, gaining more support, which are all intertwined and have to work together in order to, to empower uh, not only females, but all uh, groups which are disadvantaged and make them uh, empowered, not only economically, but also socially. So uh, I think uh, this was um, a, a brief uh, insight into the topic of economic uh, empowerment, which uh, makes a little bit of time to take a look at how, uh, in particularly European Union, uh, within European uh, uh, internal market, try to um, uh, foster uh, a more gender diversity into this, again, purely uh, economic uh, uh, surrounding. So. You already know that internal market is a market uh, of the European Union, which should serve to remove frontiers between member states, and it has economic connotation. So it serves to um, pursue uh, various fundamental freedoms, which are uh, related to either provision of uh, free movement of services, capital, free movement of goods or persons, which usually are connected to a certain economic gain. So it's. Uh, it's not uh, related to um, a position of persons in general, but only those uh, related to internal market and competitive advantages on the market. And in that term, internal market is um, um, actually being built to reduce um, uh, 
unequal treatment which is related to nationality. So it's not, rela it's not related to um, uh, gender-specific issues, but to rather um, um, providing nationals of each member states to be equivalent and to um, freely move on the internal market of um, uh, other member states, and it goes as well for uh, other fundamental freedoms. But nevertheless, uh, there are certain uh, issues which are related to fundamental freedoms, if not directly, then at least indirectly. So first of all, when it comes to free movement of persons, which is a comprised of free movement of workers and right of establishment in terms of uh, self-employed persons and right to pursue economic activity in terms of legal persons, there are many important aspects of this free movement related to gender balanced uh, and uh, more uh, equal position uh, on the internal market. Everything I was mentioning so far is related to this free movement of persons. All this free movement of workers is uh, related to, to equal pages or to more equivalent uh, wages, uh, equal uh, position in terms of uh, position uh, within uh, um, uh, your employee. Uh, also is related to position within boards uh, of directors, within enforcing um, certain um, persons to pursue economic activities, etc. So in parallel to free movement of nationals of each member state, it also goes hand in hand with gender equal movement of these uh, persons. So everything we, we discussed so far also is related to the uh, free movement of persons. But it's not only limited to free movement of persons, but indirectly also affects all these other free movements. And when it comes to other movements and other uh, freedoms, also they are correlated with uh, gender balanced provision of services, um, uh, reducing gender um, unequivalent uh, goods on the market and promoting gender neutral products and goods on the market, as well as providing um, equal opportunities in, in um access to capital and to financial services. Even though it sounds a little bit to be uh, only on the uh, level of um, for example, introducing products with gender neutral characteristic uh, to uh, uh, be of the affirmative, it is uh, unlike that sometimes uh, was used to uh, not only attain uh, or to uh, improve uh, economic, but also other goals as well. Uh, it's not only to introduce gender neutral characteristic like this, it's to reduce something which was a huge and uh, unequivalent position in terms of every aspect of um, um, previous, uh, let's say, experiences. I don't know whether you are aware of the chocolate bar, which is called Yorkie, but until 2011, this Yorkie chocolate bar, which was uh, available, for example, on the UK market, went with a package uh, like this. And it was called Yorkie, and uh, on the O, it was a sign of uh, not available or not permitted or not intended for females. And it had a huge marketing campaign which was said it's not for girls, Yorkie, not for girls. But then it came with additional um, marketing uh, logos like not available in pink or do not feed the birds, save your money for driving lessons or you got the vote, be happy with that. King size, not queen size. Not for handbags. And then this commercial, if you see a truck with a huge Yorkie sign where it was a video uh, with uh, a, a truck driver who was munching this Yorkie uh, a chocolate and saying, girls, can you handle it? So I guess that this gender-neutral 
um, goods are not only with these flowers and butterflies, as you've seen a couple of slides before, but goes with a really distinct, distinctive social context, which was applicable, uh, believe it or not, until 2011. Until 2011, they uh, decided to remove this O, uh, not for girls, sign, and to replace with something more gen gender mainstreaming, like uh, gender stereotypes, you're stronger than that. It's not for the weak, or do not feed sexism. It's for everyone. But I'm afraid that all those who remember all these campaigns from before would stick and, and also have in their mind that York is not for girls. So, Excuse me, were there yes. any reactions? Yes, of course. So uh, uh, during uh, years, they were provoking public for a really long time, but only in 2011, they, they were uh, switching their campaign to this. And it was provocative uh, since the beginning, of course. I mean, everybody was commenting these commercials, but it was uh, completely banned uh, only in 2011. Uh, and it was present all the time, all over uh, TV shows, in, in, in media, in, in public commercials, on billboards, uh, in the uh, supermarkets, etc. They were going on, on a really, um, uh, really uh, tough uh, marketing campaign. And it was really sold well, which is a, a really, um, really... Um, unfortunate uh, uh, result of that campaign. Okay, so to get back to this more boring stuff, when it comes to reducing uh, uh, inequivalence in terms of uh, other provision of, of services, what we have is a directive which is uh, specifically uh, dedicated to reduce, as I said, uh, discrimination in terms of supply of goods and services. Mm -hmm. And one of the major provisions is that it's preventing different in treatment based on sex while selecting a contractual partner. In other words, you cannot discriminate when you are uh, uh, selecting a, a partner in a contract, which was uh, in particularly relevant in certain financial sectors. For example, in insurance, it led to many important um, effects of this uh, discrimination because, as you are aware, insurance companies are usually calculating their risk based on uh, certain uh, um, features of uh, uh, what is to be insured. And when it comes to life insurance, it is also related uh, to gender and it's related to uh, various uh, aspects of, for example, um, females like being pregnant or uh, using maternity leave, etc. And the result of that was that uh, uh, it made uh, um, certain... Um, uh, produce uh, inequivalent in terms of uh, female and men. So this uh, directive says for the purpose to introduce something which is called unisex, unisex insurance tariffs. You're, you are not to discriminate based on the sex. You need to calculate insurance uh, tariff based on uh, irrespective of the sex. And even uh, if certain um, diseases or conditions are related to female, you are not uh, able to calculate them based on individual level, but based on some additional uh, and general uh, conditions such as a family history or etc. So we have this case uh, which was um, uh, really uh, actual in 2011 where uh, insurers were enforced not to calculate insurance premiums based on sex and there were no exceptions allowed um, in, in regard to that. So they were pushed to uh, rely on various but not gender specific 
specific conditions when they calculate insurance <coughs> premiums because it was realized that this is indirectly discriminating certain consumers of certain financial product, uh, produce and in terms of that needs to be uh, removed. Um, so I came uh, to the end of what I plan to uh, uh, present to you today and uh, uh, what uh, I uh, wanted now to use this time we have uh, is to um, comment first of all on this first part of, um, of uh, uh, my lecture related to empowerment of uh, uh, entrepreneurship and whether you find all these measures and uh, what was done so far being enough to, to promote entrepreneurship or whether you would suggest something else. Um, I would also like to hear your comments. Uh, I expect your comments on this uh, uh, really interesting um, chocolate bar and uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, effects of uh, this um, gender uh, not really equivalent or to to use uh, the mildest term for this uh, uh, discriminating campaign. So uh, I will first of all um, let uh, those of you being present to comment and ask questions and give your opinion and then we will uh, open also chat for all uh, those of you who are following uh, uh, online. So uh, please, uh, we have uh, um, a colleague who wants to, to, to comment or say something. Yes, please. Hello, I'm Nemanja, and I have a question. In our region, uh, aside uh, bank loans, aside, uh, are there any private uh, uh, specialized foundations to help uh, women become uh, entrepreneurs? Yes, thank you. Uh, so, as I said, here in Serbia we have a plenty. Uh, I'm not really aware of the region, but I think it's quite comparable. And it, it was a really uh, enforced by the state to, uh, first of all, set up foundations and various clubs and other organizations in order to improve female entrepreneurship. We have various uh, regional uh, associations in on a town level, for example, in Čačak, in um, various uh, towns all over uh, Vojvodina, in Belgrade. We have many associations to, um, uh, first of all, try to uh, communicate with female entrepreneurs. Then we have various networks, and as I said, we have this uh, female dragon award uh, in Serbia, and it goes every year to a female entrepreneur who was distinguished in, in some activities during that year and promoting entrepreneurship. At the beginning, there were females who were promoting entrepreneurship, but during years it were females who were succeeding in their entrepreneurial activities. So it switched from promotion and information towards success and, and awards to those who were successful in their own activities. So yes, there are many, plenty of them who uh, usually are um, putting together and networking um, all those interested in, in, in empowering female. Unfortunately, we do not have that many networking in terms of um, business angels and funds available coming from private equity at all, let's say, in the entrepreneurship. And then again, we don't have special particular funds coming from private equity to female entrepreneurship. But we did have so far many state uh, funds dedicated and public calls to female entrepreneurship and to encourage female entrepreneurship. So yes, it's highly developed also in this region, which is quite um, uh, holding pace with the European Union. And we do not see that we are lagging behind in terms of that. And excuse me, proportionally speaking about male and female, in Serbia. 
in Serbia. So, as I said, we have less than 25 and the uh, sole entrepreneurs in Serbia are female. So, uh, sole entrepreneur is a, a limited business activity where uh, one person performs business activity. And uh, to better understand that, all hairdressers, all cosmetic uh, or other beauty uh, salons are organized as soul entrepreneurship. Um, all uh, linguistic or those activities, for example, schools for learning language, uh, school for sports, schools for support of kids, etc., are going to be organized as usually as soul entrepreneurship. So all entrepreneurship activities um, from 100%, 25% are female. And I guess that goes to this beauty and education activities, or more or less health activities. And then again, when we come to companies established in the Republic of Serbia, 15% of female have controlling ownership in the company. And I would just say that even though that sounds little, usually it is not only female that are really controlling the company, but usually are only being um, to formally fulfill certain conditions when their husbands, relatives, brothers, etc., want to hide behind female who would be owner of the company even though she's not really involved in the company. The same goes for position of director. So in, in reality, this 15%, 15 is also still uh, only formal 15% even though too little in reality it's even lower. So it's and it is because of that that we are in, in recent couple of years doing a lot of statistics to see how many female are represented in the companies, how many of them are on position of directors, board of directors, etc. And it's a really, uh, a really uh, low uh, percentage here in so the Republic of So empowerment of women in that regard is still... Just really low. And what is unfortunately happening in the Republic of Serbia and in the region is that before, uh, in, during the Social Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, you do not remember, but we do, we have these working uh, uh, people uh, slogans and people were um, considered to be equal and female were encouraged to do all, uh, including very uh, physically uh, hard uh, jobs, like work in mining, etc. And uh, this improved uh, at least in, in certain aspect position of female at that time. But what we face today is unfortunately that position of female in our region is decreasing and that females are rather uh, more often than before deciding not to work, to stay at home, to take care of kids, to have more kids, etc. while being unemployed. So it is unfortunately trend that female are lowering their uh, economic position with this uh, a choice uh, which is unfortunately some something which uh, I think it's uh, socially uh, even encouraged or or, or uh, being uh, respected uh, these these uh, days I'm not against uh, a female of dedicating to, to, to families or to have more kids than they used to have before uh, but I'm uh, to those women who can and know something to empower them to to be even though at home be able to perform certain economic activity if they know something, if they, they, they uh, gain certain knowledge, to use that knowledge. Because uh, being so entrepreneurship opens so many possibilities to at least work at home um, in, in, in many uh, various activities uh, uh, which uh, uh, female have uh, equal knowledge compared to men. In the Republic of Serbia, again, their high education is 50% compared to, to, to men uh, uh, higher education, so they are equal in education. But once finishing uh, uh, even high education, they tend to be on much lower positions, if at all. Yes, please. 
Uh, yes, you mentioned the situation where the woman is just there as a facade and the men of the family are running the business. So I have a question concerning those affirmative measures you mentioned, where certain funds would be set aside for encouragement of women starting their own businesses. So how would we prevent those funds being abused by situations like these? Well, it's usually not only sufficient to be a female to get those resources. So you would need to justify what your activities would be, and they would be usually something related to your education, your uh, references, etc. So they will really look into what your project is, what you intend to do, and to really foster really female entrepreneurship, not to be abused by uh, a male who is sitting at home and expecting that um, women will bring money money and he will just spend it then on his own business venture. It's really strictly being controlled and it's not uh, something that you can so easily uh, circumvent uh, to, 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 to use to, to, to other uh, goal. What I was mentioning in this facade is the um, various situations when male are um, either wanting to, to, wanting to disperse risks or they want to avoid certain imposition of certain sanctions where they are prevented to, to perform certain activities that they use um, certain partners to uh, to um, be their facade. Okay, yes, please. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, female entertainership in um, rural areas in Serbia. Mm -hmm. Do you have any data regarding that? For example, Vojvodina or... Uh, yes, unfortunately, I do not have in terms of entrepreneurship but I have a really devastating uh, uh, data in terms of land ownership in rural areas. And they say it's uh, above 89% of agricultural land is in the possession of male. So, um, and again, uh, equivalent uh, uh, or nearly equivalent uh, amount of um, property, uh, other property uh, in rural area is uh, also um, uh, with men. So actually, if they do not own uh, property, they would again have a problem in starting their own business by collecting funds and they won't be able to have loans from the bank uh, in that situation. So I don't know about uh, uh, entrepreneurship, but unfortunately, this correlated uh, uh, land ownership is just uh, uh, showing really uh, low results. Yeah, Th thank you for that comment. Since I'm just like looking right now into data, for example, uh, women owners of pro any property, any kind, are just 6%. So 94% of owners are male. And for example, there's also some data of 44% of women which are giving up their heritage, family heritage, yeah. in favor of their brothers, for example. So yeah. there's probably adding just to Which the is more common in rural area than yeah. in in in. Um, fortunately, uh, this uh, uh, late uh, trend of uh, um, in cities where you purchase uh, your apartments usually involves uh, if uh, certain people are uh, married to be co-owners of the uh, properties and and has certain effect also on that. But unfortunately, yes, in rural areas, this is like in particular inheriting land and property and agricultural uh, uh, property. It's just des devastating in terms of, of data. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I wanted to ask what's your opinion on the relation between, let's say, intersectionality and entrepreneurship in terms of when I think for instance, an ethnic minority woman. Like on one hand, her position is as a rule such that she has less opportunities in employment and generally less economic opportunities. So when I think about that, I think maybe it is even less likely that she will become an entrepreneur. But on the other hand, I think about the argument that you have mentioned that it is often the case that people have no other choice and that's why they become entrepreneurs. So maybe there's a different, let's say, statistics in this regard. So I'm not sure that the question is clear enough, so yeah. thank you. I, I'm not aware of those statistics, but I would say that they can offer something which is specific to their ethnicity in combination with being female. So if you intertwine those two, maybe if encouraged to 
um, pursue something they really know, have been educated to, or, or, or other empowerment, you would have great results. But I don't know whether um, it is still being done in that way. So, yes, it could be uh, correlated. Okay, if nobody... Uh, I, I would like, yes. I would like to, to ask, so how to sum up all the problems, with obstacles, so they are, they are uh, com comparing, when we compare education, that's the level of female education is there, equal, yes. or gives... Unfortunately, I would go back to my third or fourth slide. It would take 151 years yes, to but make... Why, so, okay. So it means that there are many obstacles. So uh, lack of uh, property or ownership then lack of uh, own funds and f funds, lack of state support, lack of, how to say, uh, bravery to, to take risks, maybe too much competitiveness needed for which women, because of an uh, unfair share of work, family obligations. Mm -hmm. so, Stereotype in education, obviously there are so many in positions, stereotyping who should uh, spend funds available in the family, who should own the property, who should get the loan, who should risk, who should try to, to, to make so money. So what are the tools, instruments, uh, possibilities to push forward overcoming this too much of patriarchy embedded into this Together lack with this of uh, I understand. Together with this overall, I would say, education and empowerment coming from social, political, etc. Uh, levels, I would say affirmative action. So funds specific to that so they can have funds available to them and then As they the should... As crucial... Yes, I guess, yes. Pushing forward yes. factor. And then <laughs> correlated to uh, um, various uh, funding sources, not only coming from state, but from private parties, from the banks, loans dedicated only to these entrepreneurship uh, activities, Female. or um, specific loans combining not only female entrepreneurship, but research and development, uh, high-tech, etc. Uh, investments. Um, I have a question about affirmative action, especially in employment, um, because we're aware that today businesses have kind of a quota or a percentage of women they have to employ. And I feel like sometimes it gets a lot of backlash, that affirmative action kind of puts women in a better position than men, and that sometimes they feel like they're not getting the job because they have the qualities that are needed for the job. Instead, they're there just to fill a quota to make the business seem more um, gender inclusive and everything. So how do we kind of achieve that substantial equality? Um, because it seems like it's easy to achieve that type of formal equality in sort of like in different legal aspects, but how to achieve that substantial equality to make women not feel like they're there just because they're women instead of like actually having certain qualities. I think that's a great introduction to uh, Yelena Lepetis lecture, who is really ded dedicated to that particular issue. Uh, so uh, I want to steal her arguments and <laughs> her time, which is really dedicated to that problem. Um, even though I was reluctant a little bit before on this affirmative action in regard to that, uh, she will show you uh, various uh, great arguments in favor of the affirmative action. So you will excuse me not to answer your question, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, do we have somebody uh, from uh, the audience uh, who wish to, okay, just uh, uh, let me open chat. More chat. Okay. Uh, you got the vote. Be happy with that. Okay. Is it gives the impression that the right to vote came into existence on its own without any serious struggle. <laughs> okay. This is a, uh, a comment on this uh, great slide. <laughs> 
why not have corporate social responsibility mm -hmm. for women private funding yeah this was everything we mentioned so far society education i agree i think that's information education uh, removal of these uh, stereotypes is crucial to gain more uh, confidence uh, among population that everything is open to everybody. Um, we can see difference between who uh, was looked at working women in period when our mothers were working and, and today companies who had shift were had a closed kindergarten, yes. Um, this, there is also affirmative action in regard to um, child care. I have to say that uh, unlike Serbia where you have um, at least a good health care uh, system and kinder care system starting from a year so you can um, uh, have uh, uh, to rely on the system in, in many European states uh, that system is not that effective. It starts very late. Um, usually female are forced to take care of their kids because there is no other option or the other option is extremely expensive. Ex expensive. And this is one of the affirmative actions as well. Uh, and uh, uh, those countries where you have uh, um, not provided for uh, daycare uh, for, for small children uh, in recent years introduce um, not only uh, incubators for business venture but also related kinder care, uh, care um, for uh, moms who want to or dads who want to bring their kids over there and, and leave them on uh, dedicated their care while they are performing business. Certain countries started with those projects with, with huge success, like in Austria, for example, certain other countries still struggle with the, with child care. So this is a, a great uh, obstacle for, for female to start uh, doing something while kids are small. And if you uh, um, think, for example, that in certain countries you, you need to stay at home for five years for one kid, then your career, you can imagine what happens with your career after two kids uh, and, and staying at home for, for a certain amount of time. So you would, and, and then again, for those female, it would be great to use their knowledge and, and to make available for them to do while at home a certain activities, which are um, something uh, not necessarily related to their previous knowledge and education. And in order to do that, we need to educate them at a later stage in their life to, to, to know and to improve their knowledge to switch to some other activity. And if both partners are entrepreneurs, then they can combine fair share of family and very easily. Yes, and so I think in these days more partners are really willing willing to support and it's it's much more common to see in these days that both parents are equally engaged in the uh, uh, child care and that they share this burden in, in every aspect of, of life so we are definitely um, improving also um, we have a comment yeah working time different uh, so yes I completely uh, uh, agree um, so I think um, uh, that uh, we have uh, now uh, um, time being close to make a, a short break. Uh, my colleague Lel Jelena Lepetic is here. She is uh, eager to take over. So I'll leave you for a uh, 10 to 15 minutes break to, to have yes. your breath and then uh, we will continue. Perfect. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. I'm just switching off the uh, uh, microphone and we will uh, turning on in 10 minutes time. Yes. Yes. So I think coffee is ready. Coffee is ready.